When it comes to South Asian cuisine, we all have our favorites, from the delicious tandoori chicken to the infamous samosas. But are these mouth-watering dishes setting you up for a heart attack? Welcome to Dia TV Spotlight. Today's spotlight is on heart health. Dietitian Shraddha Patel of the South Asian Heart Center says the high risk for heart attacks among South Asians is beyond just lifestyle and genetic predisposition. I go over their own food logs, so that gives me their food preferences, and I will modify their food preferences as per nutritionally appropriate guidelines that they need to follow to reduce their risk factors. Mm -hmm. So my uh, my recommendations will go to them over email and I send them a detailed summary of my nutrition recommendations as per their food preferences. Mm -hmm. Executive Director Ashish Mathur says knowing where your heart health stands can make all the difference. People ask us, you know, I go to my physician, I get my annual checkup, why do I need you? And the answer to that is that when you go to your physician, they do the set of tests, they advise you on what issues are, and very often they'll tell you to go and exercise and eat better. And that's where it kind of stops for you. Then everything else is left on you to kind of do what you have to do. Uh, and even if you do try to kind of figure out, you know, how much to exercise, what to exercise, or what to eat, you may not be actually... Um, preventing a heart attack in your future. Mm -hmm. And the reason is dietary changes uh, really have to be personalized. You know, what works for you mm -hmm. may not work for me. Mm -hmm. And what we, we do is by suggesting changes and measuring you again and seeing wh which direction Tracking. things are changing, right? Mm -hmm. so, um, so that's what our program does mm -hmm. for you is the, the very personalized um, counseling around nutrition mm -hmm. and around exercise and also around meditation. And the center specializes in making this as easy as possible. Ideally, we'd like this to be greater than 50. After a lab appointment to gather biometrics and blood sample, participants return to the center to meet with the clinician. So typically, I'll do the initial screening, which mm -hmm. is a 30-minute consultation mm -hmm. called the heart risk assessment. Mm -hmm. That's completed by phone, which goes over um, medical history, family history, current medical conditions, mm -hmm. medication therapy that participants are currently on, mm -hmm. um, habits regarding exercise nutrition, mm -hmm. and then when they come in for their test results, I actually go over all of the screening results that we've, we've collected, mm -hmm. which includes the heart risk assessment screening, the physical or biometric measurements that mm -hmm. we take at the time of the blood draw, mm -hmm. and then any risk factors identified through blood work. Jeanette says she can't stress the importance of exercise enough. Because one of the things I want to try to focus on is trying to improve your good cholesterol particle, which is called your HDL2B. I always think of HDL2Bs as the dump trucks that come out to clear all those big LDLs. Oh. They're kind of like street sweepers for the fat. So it takes it out of your system, basically. That's right. After visiting the clinician, the next step is a 30-minute phone consultation with dietitian Shraddha Patel. Thank you so much for that yes. vlog. If you were to visit your physician for an annual checkup, this is where it would end. Health coach chair Anita Sate says the follow-up coaching calls make all the difference, and she's got the number to back up her claim. After five years into the program, now the first paper is you know recently being published, and it will be read in uh, you know uh, it will be presented in Amer it, it is accepted in American Heart Association, and it will be presented in March. And uh, the looking at the data, the conclusion is that the the people who were coached did make a significant dif uh, improvement in their total cholesterol, total cholesterol to HDL ratio, as well as their triglycerides. Mm -hmm. The coaching really plays a very, very important part in helping people change behaviors. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we measure that too. Mm -hmm. We looked at the people coming into the program um, and then people that were followed up through the program. And we had 1,600 people that we were following up with mm -hmm. who were coached over a period of time. And we um, found out how many servings of vegetables and fruits they had before and how many servings of vegetables they of food they, uh, fruit, uh, of vegetables mm -hmm. they were having afterwards. Mm -hmm. And we saw that there was almost a 58% improvement 
in people consuming more vegetables. Yeah. Okay, that was number one. 28% improvement in people eating more fruit. And, uh, and almost 56 or 57% improvement in people um, uh, increasing their physical activity. The South Asian Heart Center aims to reduce the incidence of heart disease among the at-risk South Asian community through a comprehensive, culturally appropriate program. Our prevention program itself, where we actually counsel and screen and educate and um, pro provide uh, you know, lifestyle mm -hmm. uh, counseling and coaching, that program is about 60% of our entire year's mm -hmm. budget. And with that, we are able to screen about 800 to 900 people mm -hmm. in the year. And the rest is devoted to outreach, mm -hmm. educating physicians, because that's an important aspect right. of this um, initiative, and also doing research. Right. For which, for most of the part, we are working off volunteers, right. um, you know, to kind of come in and help us with those activities. And each year, the center puts together the oh-so-popular Scarlet Night Gala, their annual fundraiser. This year we have Sheena Anger, mm -hmm. Dr. Sheena Anger, who is a professor at Columbia, mm -hmm. to be our keynote speaker. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Sheena Anger is uh, the one who's kind of written um, on the theory of choice. Mm -hmm. uh, and we felt that that topic was actually very relevant to what we are trying to do, because mm -hmm. in the end it's just about choice. You know, lifestyle is about choice. Um, and we are hoping that, you know, people will come to listen to her to uh, talk about how people make choices. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, and perhaps help with how to make that choice. This year, Malter says he hopes to beat his last year's number of three hundred thousand dollars. Three hundred and seven thousand dollars tonight. The process is impressive, and the numbers back it up. But how does this all sound on the lips of a participant? We sat down with Namish Mehta, who says his life hasn't been the same since. It makes you feel better and you can enjoy the rest of your life, your family life, your work life and stuff, where you feel more energetic, you feel better about yourself, your weight's under control, you, you, you feel good, you look good, you know, I mean, this kind of thing. So that stuff is not to be ignored. It's part of a lifestyle change. Dia TV is a proud broadcast sponsor of the Scarlet Night, and we will be bringing you highlights from the night's festivities right here on Dia TV Spotlight. <laughs>